Bartolomeu debuted on the global side of One Piece Treasure Cruise on the 28th of July 2016. This batch was a progression of the previous few batches, furthering the extension of the Dressrosa arc in OPTC, as the anime was currently airing these episodes during this time. This Sugofest batch introduced some of the Corridor Colosseum fighters, which included the likes of Don Jin Zhao, Kano Kingdom Gang, Blue Gilly, Jiao Kungdu Fighter, Funk Brothers, Mogara Kingdom Assassins, Hajuden, Pirate Mercenary, as well as Abdullah and Jeet, former bounty hunters, and a Sugofest exclusive character which assisted in giving the Striker class a minor buff providing one of the better consistent attack multipliers at the time, whilst also providing a great way to reduce damage taken. His special ability gave the crew a way to survive an otherwise thought death hit, granting some survivability tactics. Introducing Man-Eating Bartolomeo. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugofest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. Welcome to another episode of the Legends of OPTC series, and today we're going to be covering uh, a Sugarfest exclusive that I personally was never a fan of. Didn't really like this character ever, even upon release. However, when support effects became a really cool thing in the game, uh, this unit definitely got a lot better in my eyes, but that character is none other than Bartolomeo. We'll talk about him in a little bit, but before we do that, let's actually talk about the whole Sugarfest batch that this character debuted with. First of which is Don Chin. Jiao, which is actually not an awful rare recruit on release, powerhouse striker int character, captain effect boosting the attack of powerhouse by two times and HP of strikers by two times interesting captain effect, not that great though, but a special ability that would give you a two turn or boost depending on what HP level you're at. So if you're below 30% and you get a 1.75 orb boost for two turns, multiple turn boosts weren't very common back when this character released. So getting an orb booster that was able to do that was very good. He was a striker character, so he had inherent synergy with not only Bato, but also with uh, Legend Whitebeard, for example, who also wanted to be at low HP thresholds. So it made a lot of sense, actually pretty good special ability, but also you could get a 1.5 orb boost or a 1.25 orb boost. So the fact that there was an HP restriction was a bit annoying, but still, at least it would give you some type of orb boost nonetheless. The next character here is Blue Gilly, who is a fighter free spirit, quick character, captain effect, which would give your attack and recovery boost to fighters by two times. And he also had a special ability that would change the captain slot into matching, and then also you could switch your slots three times. Pretty odd special ability, low cooldown, which you could spam multiple times per quest, but overall, Blue Gilly was never a character that saw heavy play. The Funk Brothers were a very interesting unit as well. Uh, this character, fighter-driven dex character, captain effect, boosting the attack of all characters by 2.5 after the 21st hit in the combo chain, 3.5 after the 36th hit in the combo chain. What was his combo? Eight hit combo. So uh, characters that were based around combo hits were interesting and a lot of fun, but they never really saw play and they never were heavy, heavy meta, really. They weren't very useful, unfortunately. And then his special ability, very similarly, would go ahead and do random damage to all enemies and then boost the attack of all characters by 1.75 after the 30th hit in the chain for three turns. So as cool as that may seem, reaching 30th combo hit is pretty difficult, and if you are able to reach it, most of the time it's only going to be like your final character is going to get that, maybe if you're at most like the last two characters, but yeah, it was pretty difficult to build a team around combo hits because a lot of the characters with high combo hits were just awful, but interestingly enough, they tried it, unfortunately it didn't really work. Alright, so moving on now to Hardrodin, who is a powerhouse fighter psi character. Captain effect would boost the attack of powerhouse by 2.75 if you're above 99% at the start of the turn. Yeah, pretty terrible captain effect, but then the special ability reduces crew's HP to 1, and then deals 10 times the removed HP as damage to a single enemy, and then boosts own attack by 2.25 times for one turn. Characters reducing HP to 1, very useful. However, he's a powerhouse and a fighter character. Uh, powerhouse and fighter don't really want to have characters that reach low HP. If this character was a striker, it would have been actually a really nice addition to like V1 Whitebeard, or really good synergy with... 
the, what's his face, uh, Don Chin Jiao would have had great synergy with him in his own batch, but unfortunately, not a striker. He was a powerhouse fighter, which really didn't help him at all. And then we move on to this guy, Abdullah NG. This was actually a character that saw a little bit of play, mainly because he was mainly used for speed farming. So if you were running a Fortnite style team, because Fortnites were very common back then, um, this guy may have seen some usage. So he is a slasher striker strength character, captain effect, boosting the attack of striker and slasher by 2.25, and then giving the minus two cooldown at the start of the quest, and then a five turn cooldown that reduced the special cooldowns of slashers and strikers by one turn, and slashers and striker characters badly matching slots will be changed into recovery. Unfortunately, there weren't really, like, Sailor effects weren't a thing back then either, um, and, like, there weren't really many effects that just made slots beneficial to your crew. So as cool as this is, unfortunately, a lot of the time, you would actually have to, you know, partner this up with another special ability that would change recovery into matching slots. So, you know, back then, the, the orb changing wasn't really the main reason why he was used. It was mainly because he was a low cooldown character, provided special cooldown reduction, allowing for speed farming mechanics. So that's Abdullah and Jeet, the final character of this batch, but let's go ahead now and talk about the legend. And the Sugar Fest exclusive of this batch was none other than man-eating Bartolomeo. Barto, striker-driven strength character. Captain Effect would go ahead and boost the attack of striker characters by a variable factor, depending on how many striker characters are on your team. If you do not attack with Barto, reduce damage received by 30% for that turn. And this does stack with double Barto, so if you don't attack with any of the Bartos, it gives you a 30% damage reduction plus an additional 30% damage reduction. It's not an addition, it's more of a multiplier. So it's like, a, you know, you just multiply the damage by 0.7, by 0.7 again. Essentially, if you don't have your Barto's attack with double Barto, you essentially take half damage for that turn, which is pretty good. Um, and the attack multiplier that you would get, it is dependent on how many strikers are on your team. So you can see here, if you have six striker characters, you will get a 2.75 times boost to your striker units, which obviously makes sense. He was arguably the best time, probably the best striker captain in the game. Those strikers weren't that great because they didn't have like a dream team like what we saw with like Crocodile, for example, back in the day. Um, you know, strikers definitely struggled a little bit. They didn't really have like guaranteed ways to get slots. There was maybe one key character that released that helped them get guaranteed slots, but it was mainly for strength decks and quick teams talking about Colosseum Hawkins. Um, so definitely strikers kind of struggled with orb manipulation back in the day. But let's have a look at his special ability. His special on a, uh, it was an 18 turn cooldown, which is ridiculously high, protects from defeat for one turn and deals several times his attack and typeless damage to one enemy. So we've seen, you know, protect from defeat, very similar to when you use Halloween Law in modern day ages. His special ability gives you the orb boost and stuff, but it also protects you from defeat for one turn. And Bartu was the same way, protect from defeat. So if a single enemy does like a huge hit of damage and you normally would die, this allows you to tank that hit. Of course, if you're being attacked by multiple enemies, that will not protect you from defeat. It's only if you're being single targeted out. But then he does a little bit of damage as well. The damage is whatever. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. It does say here though that the damage you get from his special ability is actually higher if you're at low HP. So at low HP, you can actually get a lot of damage output there, which is cool. But again, Bato wasn't really used for his special ability. As I kind of mentioned a bit earlier, he was actually a lot better when he got access to his support effect because this is a very useful support. Kind of weird that he reduces paralysis considering this character has nothing to do with paralysis at all. Um, but he does touch to Nico Robin and Cavendish, which which was useful. We're not going to be covering that in today's video. We're just going to be using this character as a captain and seeing how he performs. But anyways, let's go ahead now and jump over and see what kind of content we're going to be playing today. All right, so here we have the wheel. And in today's video, we're going to go ahead and have a look and see if we're going to be taking on Clash Blackbeard, Clash Duval, or Clash Virgo. Very interested to see how this one's going to be going today. Honestly, I think no matter which one we get chosen with, um, I think it's going to be difficult. Bato was not a very powerful legend on release, and Strikers, as I said, were pretty bad um, up until a little bit later on when they got a bit more powerful units. So I'm kind of worried either way <laughs> to see how this episode goes today. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel, see what we get. Uh, I don't, I, don't, I really don't care which one gets chosen. I'm very interested to see which one, though. Ooh, and it's going to be Duval. Interesting. Okay, well, let's go ahead, hop in the game, and take on Clash Duval. Let's do it. And here we are in game now with my man Barto. It says that captain of the Barto Club Pirate Group, he uses the barrier barrier fruit to generate barriers at will. 
This lets him form a barrier around his fist to power up his punch in a move he copied from Luffy's Gum Gum Pistol. So here we have with Bato, as we said, you know, he's a, he's a striker-driven character. He's got everything ready to go. He's got his max special. 18-turn cooldown is ridiculously expensive, though. I have opted not to go with damage reduction sockets for Bato because I feel like we can kind of abuse the damage reduction whenever we want just due to his captain effect. And I think that should be pretty good going in our favor. And obviously, we've got plus 100 attack and plus 100 HP. And his sockets are completely done. No limit break, of course. But this is the team that we're bringing today to take on Duval. I don't know how this is going to go. I feel somewhat confident. But at the same time, I really don't know what to expect moving forward here. Now, Duval mainly is a dex unit. And there's like a mini boss that we have to deal with as well. I think all lumber should be really good for dealing with the mini boss and we'll go through it a little bit later but in terms of sockets we have max blind and despair which is always useful to have we have our cooldown we have a lot of matching slots so hopefully we see lots of those matching slots today and we do have max auto healing which is also pretty nice um today we're also using the regular thousand sunny ship which gives us uh, just a 1.5 attack boost and if we do somehow get the special ready then that would be cool as well just to get 50k fixed damage always nice to have so um we have an attack boost with our key we have an orb boost with um, Squad, which is interesting too. Now, Squad is also a striker unit. He's a 1.75 orb booster, and he feels just like better than Don Chin Jiao, unless if you have a way to get yourself to low HP thresholds, then I feel like Don Chin Jiao is better because, you know, he only gets his big boost below 30% health. We have Wipeit here as well. Um, this one is not like the one we used in episode one. This is actually an unevolved copy that I've evolved, maxed his sockets, maxed his skill, given him some candy. So this is like what you would normally see back in like when he first came out, right, in, in 2016. So, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the content to take on Duval. Once again, shout out to my man, the Lord Shiro, for providing us with a Bato friend captain. You love to see it. Here we go. We're about to take on Clash Duval, the highest difficulty with Legend Bato. This is going to be exciting. I, I don't even remember the last time I even used Bato as a captain. So, this is going to be really, really fun. Let's jump into it. All right, here we are with Clash Duval. Let's jump into it. So, no preemptive attack at the start of the quest, but... Ideally, we want to try and get our specials as maxed as we can before we reach the final boss stage. Now, of course, these back female characters, um, these characters are, are pretty infamous for whenever they, you know, do their normal attack, they typically despair you. Now, I don't know if they're going to do that on turn one. I am kind of nervous about that, but let's see. We actually, oh wow, we do a lot of damage to them. I wasn't expecting to do that much damage. That's actually kind of crazy. I think we will actually tank a hit here. Let's attack with this or Lumbus. So that's not going to do that much damage at all. And remember that if we don't attack with Barter, we actually get significant damage reduction. So look at that. Basically taking no damage from these dudes at all. That is so, so good. Plus, if you add the auto healing on top of it, bro, this is a fantastic way to stall. How good is that? How good is that? Now, again, I don't know what these guys actually do below any health thresholds. Hopefully they don't do... Oh, hang on. He's doing something. Attack up. Okay. How much is that going to really matter? Yeah, probably not going to matter that much. That's actually pretty fine with me. Uh, let's go ahead and start attacking this guy. Dude, we can just like stall for days. Look at this. This is a fantastic way to get our specials ready to go. I was really concerned about this heading into this because obviously I haven't tested this team in this content. I was really concerned about, you know, are we going to get our specials ready to go? But honestly, things are looking pretty good right now. Uh, another thing though, though the thing is, is there is a lot of gimmicks that we will have to uh, take into consideration moving forward here. We do have a matching slot on our or lumber, so we probably can't stall for too much longer here, which is fine. I mean, our specials are already charged a lot. Like this is definitely overstalling, I think, at this point. But we're gonna we're gonna go as deep as we can here. Okay, he's gonna apply another increase into their attack, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about that. Um, another thing as well, I was gonna mention is that I have matching slots level three. So I'm actually kind of expecting to see more matching slots, but that has yet to come up. So I don't know where our matching slots are. They're kind of just not happening, but. Either way, the damage reduction coming in so clutch. I absolutely love this. This is sick. Uh, we can actually attack with Bato now, though. Let's move on to the next stage. All right, so battle two. Um, we've got a bunch of mobs here. This is, again, another really good place to normally get your stall off. So at this point, like, we probably don't need to stall too much. I want to kill these uh, back mob guys, though. These guys are pretty annoying, typically. Okay. That was a pretty good turn. That was actually a really, really good turn. Uh, we got a recovery slot, so we're going to go ahead and consume that. And then this is going to do, like, no damage at all, because it's a turtle, and we have two of our Bartos giving us the damage reduction. That's so good. 
All right, let's go ahead and move on. Let's kill this guy. And look, our specials are pretty much ready to go at this point, um, especially getting Whitebeard ready for the final stage. Really happy about that. That's super, super good. Go ahead and attack again. Bro, this is so good. I, I, was <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get our specials actually ready to go. That's so sick. All right, let's kill this lobster. We don't need a stall anymore. Even our barters are ready as well. That's, that's insane. Okay, this stage is typically annoying. So we've got a penguin. We have this... Oh, the seahorse needs to die. That's going down no matter what. Um, we can kill... We ideally want to kill all of them in turn one. Alright, let's see how this goes. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is pretty good. Like, as I said, we pretty much don't even need a stall here. Let's just move on. <laughs> let's just move on to stage four. Alright, let's just do it. We're just pumping through this content. Alright, so... Duval. Uh, now, this is where I wanted to bring Orlumbus, because I was reading up on what the content did, and I saw we do get a full board of block orbs. Now, Orlumbus is a very interesting unit. I believe when this guy, when, when Bartow first came out, Orlumbus was not actually out yet. However, Orlumbus has a really cool special where he removes all your block slots and then deals heavy non-type damage to all enemies based on the number of block slots that you had removed. And then he changes empty slots into matching. So essentially, if we get a full board of empty uh, of block slots here, we get a full board of matching slots, but he also does AoE damage on top of it as well. So, let's go ahead and use Orlumbus, get rid of these block slots, and uh, ideally kill all of these guys in one turn would be sick. And we did, and we get a full board of matching slots moving into the boss stage. Now, I can't remember, does he shuffle slots? I really hope he doesn't shuffle slots, that would be so good if he didn't. Alright, let's see what he does. So we are poisoned as well, which sucks, we get rid of the despair because of our sockets. He does a bit of damage as well, which is interesting, didn't expect that. And that's it. Bro, this actually worked out so perfectly. All right, so we're ready to start launching our specials. Here we go. Let's start off with Whitebeard, of course, cutting all the HP by 30%. A ridiculously useful effect that was still good for a really long time, pretty much. So that's great. Um, let's go ahead and use our Kiji, which gives our striker characters a 1.75 times attack boost for multiple turns. And it also locks our slot, so we can keep them for multiple turns, too. Now, we can go ahead and use the squad special. Um, it does reduce our health, but that really doesn't matter. Let's actually single target Duval. Let's do this. So it reduces our health, which actually does increase the damage that we get from Bato special, which is pretty cool. Because we're going to use the Bato special, because why not? Just because we can. Alright, so here's the special animation of Bato. Looks pretty cool, actually. I love this. I love that, how it shows Luffy in the animation too. Hell yeah! So it wasn't really that much damage, but it's whatever. We can actually use the Sunny Ship as well, just to get a bit of uh, extra damage off. Oh, we actually do kill the back guys with that. That's so good. Like, <laughs> this has been probably one of the most successful teams I think we've ever built. Like, it's just it's just that easy. I mean, let's just use the second Bartow special just because we can, right? Like, it's over. There is no way we're losing this. Like, there's just no way, right? Boom. All right, let's do some damage. Let's go. Bro, that was so easy. Holy crap. We dominated that. Absolutely dominated. However, you know, even though we dominated it so badly, uh, that was oh, that was so much fun. That was so much fun, especially the Olumbus coming in so clutch. I knew he was going to be good for this. I didn't realize it was going to literally KO the entire field. I was hoping that it did because it meant we could conserve those slots for the final room. Oh man, that was so good. And that brings about an end to the, another episode of the Legends of OPTC series. Thank you very much for watching this episode. And luckily, next episode, we have a very, very big character. None other than version 1 Fujitora, which on release was probably the most broken legend in the game. We'll talk more about it next week. Hopefully, you guys are excited for it just as much as I am. If you guys enjoyed this video, though, showing off Bartolomeo in his prime, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.